Okay, I'm now going to show you how to adjust your magnet rack, change your long foam, change your pivot arms, change your magnet, clean your magnet. Um, all the magnets are the, are the same, so um, it's the same process for one magnet rack or the other. So you'll re start by removing the sponge list. Support list. Next, you will separate the two pieces of the magnet rack. So, on this side, you'll notice that there's two screws. You will loosen those up. So now your magnet rack can be taken apart in two pieces. So separating, here are the long pivot arms, and here are the magnets. So first things first, I will show you how to change a long pivot arm. So on top of this bar, you'll see there are seven or eight screws. So simply loosen these screws up. Be careful when you're tightening and loosening these screws. The screw is itself is very tiny and its sole purpose is only holding down uh, the rod that keeps these pivot arms into place. So um, you don't need to tighten it to where it's going to torque the screw and break it. As soon as you feel some pressure when tightening it, go ahead and stop. So you'll see the, the bar in there itself. So once these little screws are loosened enough, the pressure will then be released on that bar. And you can simply slide the bar out like that. And then start removing the arms. So small Allen wrench, and you can see that now this pivot arm will come loose. Same thing, so the further you slide this bar out, the more of these that will come out with it. So when you have it back in, pivot arm will turn back into place, simply line it up. Going back exact in, opposite. you want to make sure that you center, try to center the beam on both sides. So that looks pretty close. And once you have the beam back in place, you tighten the screws down. And no need to tighten these down when I'm breaking.
that's how you would replace a short pivot arm. Now if you needed to change your magnet, you'll get a Torx wrench and remove these screws here. Once this bar is removed, you can then access the magnets in the magnet rack. So, taking a closer look, let's see, just put a needle nose plier in there and just pull gently, pull it out. So that's a magnet. And make sure if you're changing a magnet, put the magnet back in the way it was taken out. So, let's see, make sure they all go back in the same direction. Line it up, and then just and then just gently push it in. You'll feel it go into place. So once the magnets are changed, you then put this back. And it's recommended that once you're this far into the magnet rag or pivot arm process that you just get a uh, rag with some rubbing alcohol and just clean just clean off the magnet heads. This is these have been changed recently so uh, there's no debris on the pivot arm or the magnet but um, you'll see after heavy use you'll have a black residue on here. Just use some rubbing alcohol and clean it off. So now you will put the magnet rack back together. So the newer models have these two nubs to help you line it up, whereas the old ones do not. But the process is still the same. You put the magnet back like that. All those nubs do is just help you line it up. But it can only fit one way, so. Once the magnet rack is put back together, you're going to put the support list back on. So, just put that on there. Tighten this down tightly. And 
once. This time now, you want to use your feeler gauge that comes with the Brillo and take the 8 millimeter measurement or 0.8 and just measure that it's you know, 0.8 is goes across that it's basically just want to make sure that it gets about halfway underneath this without too much pressure so this one is fine you can see how it goes it goes through the other end without too much pressure if it doesn't go to the other end it doesn't go through smoothly you just want to You'll have to adjust it by loosening this. If there's too much of a gap, you'll want to loosen this screw a bit and then tighten this screw down to bring this beam down a little bit. And if it's conversely, if it's too tight, you'll want to raise this nut a bit and then tighten this one down, bringing the bar up. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but just Again, to, to make this, you want your 8 mil to, to go through there. If the gap is too big or too small, you will have to adjust this support list. And to move the list down, you, if the gap is too big, to move it down, you loosen this and tighten this one on both sides. And conversely, if there is too much gap, you tighten this screw, loosen this screw, just to bring everything up a bit. Both sides to be the same. So that was good. And then, lastly, you will put your sponge list back on. Put this, on, put this on just loose enough where you can still make adjustments. Because you'll have to do one final test before the magnet rack servicing is, is finished. So you can see it still moves some. So what you want to do is if you listen, you can hear it making that clicking noise. So what you want in this magnet, this magnet right to do is it needs to be solid. So you'll slowly bring up the sponge list. Until you just until you hear the clicking stop. So, okay, so more slowly. Okay, and then just hand tighten it real quick, and then you'll go to this side. And it's the same process. Okay, so slowly move. Okay, and then you can tighten it. Don't let this gap fool you. Don't. These pieces are not all uniformly cut. So even though there might be a little bit less of a black gap right here than there is right here, that has nothing to do with the actual measurement of the sponge. So don't let that fool you. Now you just want to go through. So on this side you can hear it's good. On this side you can hear it. it's still clicking a little bit. So you just want to raise this up just a little bit more. Once you have it in place, you just tighten it down. So that's how you would service your magnet rack. And again, each magnet rack is the exact same. 